Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to identify, find, and even maybe use quartz. There's some adventure in this video and some fun things, so stick around till the end. Enjoy guys. In. <laughs> nice piece of quartz. Okay. Check this out. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've not had that happen. I got some flint, fire steel, char cloth. What is going on? What is that thing? What in the world? I don't know what that is. I do not recognize this creature. All right, it is day one, new trip. Uh, we are gonna get in at the campsite, probably as the sun is setting. So a little earlier this time, but not much better. Okay, we're in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. That's a pretty decent quartzite. It looks sharp. Yep. I'll keep that one short. It's kind of sugary, but not super grainy. That should nap. At this point, I was done fussing around on the river, for a little bit at least, and noticed some storm clouds coming in again, so decided to head back to camp before the storm hit. Really good limestone. 
It's like a rose quartzite. Yeah. I'm gonna try these pieces. Ball Flakes has a lot of damage in it. Some kind of rose quartz. Let's see if we can make something out of that other piece. Here they are. It's a bar now. Straight out here. Let's see what's around here. It all looks like sandstone, shale, more shale. A lot of this is shale. A little bit of quartz right there. Quartzite. I'm up in the mountains in Vermont right now, trying to see if there's any glacial, glacial tumbled till of uh, flint or some high quality quartzite. Some good hammer stones in here. Look at that. Nice big one. Okay. Gonna continue on. Is that too coarse? It's a little coarse, but it'll work. Salt. I'll try it though. I can hear it. If it's not going, that's. Uh... Curious to see what it looks like inside. Huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, if it's not going, it's going to be basalt, right? Basalt. Yeah. The water is so clear everywhere. of flint and basalt, let's say. Those are the same type. Yeah, you can see the difference. Appreciate the difference. This is nice. See it? That's similar they look. Yeah. I think that one's fine. It's gonna be hard to tell. Yeah. That's a high quality quartzite. So that's the good stuff? This might be the really good stuff, I'm not sure yet. What it looked like on the outside? Brown. Hmm. Tan. Inside it's gray blue. Hold on. There we go. Finally focused. Sharp as heck. Yes, it is. One of my favorite things to do in the woods. So I spent the whole day smacking rocks. Didn't find too much. Found a good piece of quartzite. I'm just relaxing and reading here, looking for some info. There's not too much around this area. We'll see though.
Asperger time. Mmm. Yeah. Do you want a pickle? Here is some examples of Paleo-Indian tools, fluted points, made of this specific quartzite, and it's a shame that it's in black and white, because you can't really see what colors these are. Listen. Ooh, they're all talking. We got one over there. Another one there. Quartz it. That is beautiful. Look at those colors. Nice catch. Sharp. Yep. Does it flake predictably? It's kind of a little brittle. Hmm. So that's gray quartzite? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Very brittle. This is the stuff though. Big one. It flakes pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's more. Let's see. Mm. It's decent. It says. One dollar fine for driving faster than a walk on this bridge. <laughs> Woods roosters. Again. Just taking a look down at the river here. See if there's anything noteworthy. Oh, that's nice. That's far down the There's some kind of other line down here. Now that is a rocky creek. Yeah, it's all quartzite. All of it is quartzite? Almost all of it. Looks like a lot of it. 
Oh, pretty. Yeah, the red, the red and the gray stuff is down here too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's a good one. Tan stuff. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Hello. That's good. Cool. Make a knife out of that. Yeah. Um, here's gray. I think we finally found a good spot. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> nice. Carry the whole thing? <laughs> I love that this was literally like the last spot we were going to check. <laughs> Seriously. This was the last creek. Before heading home. After so many failed attempts. Wow. Gosh, it's so pretty up there too. I'm gonna take a look up there, just for the heck of it. I knocked that piece off there. This is the stuff. This is Cheshire Quartzite. And every single thing here appears to be this stuff, the same stuff. Small pieces, big pieces, boulders. That's the small that I just took off. So I got myself a few samples here, and uh, one of these is going to go into a comparative collection <clears throat> for a friend of mine. Um, there's stuff everywhere, like there's stuff right down there, at Orange Rock. There's big boulders of it, this is it. Yeah. This is it. So I only need a few samples, and I'm probably going to nap a knife out of this piece. See how it goes. And it's getting dark, and I'm just going to head out. This was the last spot. <laughs> it was. It was the last, last spot before. <laughs> I'm going to hit the jackpot got for quartzite. Alright, let's go. Alright, so what I did there was I looked at a geological map, found where quartzite is, and I followed that to a creek. And then once I'm down in the creek in a fishing area, at here at least, you're allowed to rock out. So I broke this piece here and created a very sharp edge right there. And this is another way you could tell if you could use it as a tool or not. It'll take the bark off. Real easy. I'll take this one with me and see if I can make a nice point out of it. I'm very curious if I can. We'll give it a try and I'll get back to you if I make something out of it. So for all I know, this might be the silicified sandstone. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into this more. This is working. So you never know. I have no idea what this stone is. And it's working. And this is Connecticut. So try everything. You never know. Like it looked like that beforehand. And now it's taking shape. And it flakes. You can see the flakes travel. travel. Catch your flakes. You don't want to be leaving stuff for uh, other people to find and think they found an archaeological site and then... They send in people to investigate, and you waste everybody's time. So just make sure you put down something. Collect your flakes and bring them home with you. Make a rock garden for yourself or something. That's what I did. So I just hit there at the base. 
put some notches in it, sharpen it, zigzag this edge. And that'll be a finished point from unidentified material. I have no idea what that is, but it flakes. So I got it all flaked up. I'm just going to put some notches in it. Interesting material here. sharp as heck. It'll jab and a nice place to tie it on. It's crude but it'll work. I'm gonna try to nap. Piece of quartz. See if we can uh, make a nice fairly big spear point. Now the trick to this stuff is keeping it together in one piece. That's what I've had a problem with. All right, so with quartz, I do not suggest trying to go super, super thin on this stuff like that. Fix that up without destroying it. I mean, that's pretty good for quartz. Oh, careful pressure flaking, I guess. came from oops, each cowboy. Try to make a point from. Wonder if this is how they did it. Just knock a flake off and I mean, I've seen artifacts that definitely look like this. one in particular that I could remember was something called Stanley Point. It was about this size. I doubt I could make it look like how it looked. But it was made out of quartzite.
so I don't know, I do not know how to get rid of these lumps on quartzite. It just does not seem to want to. It's nothing like getting rid of a lump in flint. Nothing like it at all. And the more I try to thin it with those lumps, there's the smaller and smaller it gets. That did it. All right, now. I could still half that, even with that lump. There we go. Nice. All right. I'm curious about why the switch to quartzite does not seem to be as sharp or as forgiving as splint. So I don't know, I mean, I know they say that people stopped moving around so much, which caused them to use more local tool stones. But I don't know, man. Feels, feels right, it feels sharp. I mean, that would, that would certainly kill. It's not incredibly thick. It's got a nice hafting area. Let's see if I could thin this one little ear. <clears throat> So just an experiment on all this today. See if we can make a decent, decent arrowhead. Look at that, that came off nice. Okay, so I guess that's, uh, that's just about done there. <laughs> that's, that's surprisingly easy on that piece. Let's sharpen it up a little bit. Yeah, this, this one is much better than the last one. Let me make those notches in here a little. A little deeper if I can. All right, I am not gonna mess with that too much more. Stanley Point I was talking about looked very similar to this. About the same thickness, maybe a little thinner right in there, but the same hafting element here, the same kind of notches, the same kind of flaking. Yeah, I'm happy with that. This stuff, uh, Tim, is... I am not sure what it is. It does look semi-purple and red. It's got white, purple, and red in it. Yeah, that's sharp. That'll that'll kill. That'll work. They put that on an arrow. 
but I believe Stanley points were actually spearheads for the atlatl. So can you nap quartzite for spear points and arrowheads? Uh, yes. That is a definite yes. I'm happy with this one. I might put it on a necklace. All right, guys. I have been napping for 39 minutes. Came up with a crappy, crappy point. I wouldn't even, I don't know. Yeah, no. Junk. Did it come from this piece? It did come from this piece. So that's what it looked like on the outside. Just laying on the beach. Inside, get an arrowhead. Sweet. Alright, guys. I guess I'm done. Whew. A little harder than I expected to get a decent one. You guys should try it. Let me know if, uh, let me know in the comments if you can nap this stuff and if you've made any decent points from it. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Okay, guys, I am done. I'll see you all later. Have a good one. A lot to look at here. So, it's only about noon. So, it's uh, here. It's a quahog shell. Now, I have no idea what is what around here so I'm just gonna test things as I go along I know there's argillite around here somewhere but I don't really know what it looks like or what it snaps like or if it's just like slate or what man it's a nice day it's cold though cold 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 stuff right here it's kind of like slate like I don't know I don't know if that's the argillite or what I don't really know what I'm looking for here Super, super nice milky quartz. Let me, uh, let me tap this real quick and see. Yeah, I'll take that piece. And make a knife blade out of that. Ooh. up there. There we go. There's uh, all kinds of nice white quartz here. And nap that into a little arrowhead. Make like a nice little Stanley point out of it or something. I should have brought my camera stand, but I did not. I'm taking this as well. Just kind of treasure hunting here a little bit. See what kind of nice rocks I could find for uh, napping. Quahog shell right there. And I'm not sure what that is. What is that? Oyster? 
oyster. Cool. Yeah, I'm actually gonna take this. That's pretty cool. This is uh, a mussel, mussel shell. These are delicious. If you get the right ones, I don't know what kind that is, but you could get them at restaurants. They're really good. Little periwinkle snail shells. There's actually all kinds of stuff you could do with material like that and make a necklace out of it or an earring. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff here. This is really cool. Little, little tiny, little tiny things. Look at that. That's cool. Milky quartz here is uh, pretty, pretty smooth. Let me take a corner off to show you. See that? Perfect for uh, for napping. And take that as well. This stuff will also create sparks, but not as good as that. So if you're looking for a uh, material to create sparks with for fire starting. Quartz will work. I'm just using a beach stone as a hammer stone here. It's kind of getting chipped up already. I just don't know what the material used around here was. I know it's argillite, but I've never, I, don't, I might be walking right over it. It might be this stuff for all I know. I just don't know. I mean, a lot of the stuff flakes like, uh, flakes like slate. So I just don't know. Could be, could be any of this stuff, really. This is all like slate-like. I just do not know what I'm looking for. That could be it. Do not know. Maybe somebody else can uh, chime in and maybe you see something that's uh, that I'm missing here. This is one of the things. I have a problem with when I'm going to different areas that do not have flint or like flint is extremely rare is I don't know what the lithics that the natives of this area used what color it is what the texture is from the reports I read it's just a uh, a name I get really maybe some pictures and don't really have too much to go on. I did find other cool stuff. I mean, this is like a horseshoe crab shell. A lot of them is missing. quartz here and I have I have a lot of quartz at home so I'm not going to take too much but if I see any uh, really nice specimens I'll take it the sand fleas jumping around in this stuff Quick look. 
I don't know, maybe this is it? It kind of just looks like slate to me, I don't know. It's in layers. I don't know, if you really needed a tool from this stuff, you could make it. Cave here. Yeah, I don't know, if that's, uh, if that's argillite, it's very similar to slate. I do not know. All right, gonna walk around a bit and see if I find anything. I do have my napping kit in the car, so uh, maybe I'll try to nap something out of this. A uh, spear point or an arrowhead. Let's say there's a lot of material here that I can use. Like a lot, like a lot, a lot, like any, Anything that looks like this, really. It's all quartz. I mean, almost all of this is quartz. It's pretty nice, too. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, see if I can make something. One of the tricks with quartz is to start with something somewhat flat that so that you don't have to really wail away on it trying to thin it so I'll take that this is a pretty long stretch of beach so I have a lot to look at lots of nice little hammer stones too and stuff that taking that yeah there's really a lot here I mean even this uh, even this stuff if you needed to you could shape it into a stone tool <clears throat> seeing what I could find here. This is kind of a uh, just an on the fly kind of feel here. Yeah, so I'm seeing the same kinds of rock all across this entire beach here. Quartz, quartzite, milky quartz, and this, uh, whatever this is, this stuff. It's in sheets like that. I'm gonna have to look and see what that is. I'm actually on an island right now here. Just kind of wanted to come and explore a new place. Does anybody know what that plant is? Seeing it grow all along the beach here. So this is all really cool. Now I know where.
to come to collect quartz when I need it. Every now and then I'll get an order for a set of uh, quartz arrowheads, or quartz spear points, or even a uh, quartz knife. The quartz knives are somewhat difficult to make just because it's so hard to flake and it's kind of unpredictable. See something interesting here. It's just a piece of quartz, but it's got a flaw running through it, a crack there. Nice piece though. Lots of pretty flat pieces. I guess. I'm going to look around more. I do not know if I will find anything that is like flint, but if I do, I'll be sure to show you. And I'll try to sit somewhere and uh, nap an arrowhead. All right, I'll get back to you. no matter where I go, I could always find something to nap. Something that'll work. Almost always. I'm gonna check this other stretch down here before I move on. There's some nice pieces here. There's some really nice pieces here. Yeah, I'm taking this one too. Some clear quartz, some milky quartz, very little smoky quartz. Let's look around a little bit more. Actually getting a bit of a sunburn here. It's December. The sun is hot. Uh, other thing about islands. Keep an, keep an eye on the tide. Because you don't want your shoreline disappearing on you and then you gotta climb through this stuff. It's happened to me before. See that? Those hurt a lot. And that's pretty thick. So you don't want to be stuck with the tide coming in. And then you're cornered, like somewhere over there. Then you gotta climb through that stuff. So be careful. Okay guys, there's just a ton of quartz here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna drive around a little bit and see uh, what else is on this island. Just explore, check it out, see what is going on here. All right, I'm heading out.
this area is very uh, flat, as can be expected for an island. Lots of brush for rabbits to hide in, too. There's probably a ton of rabbits around here. Alright, I'm just driving to the other end of the island to poke around. Some pretty nice scenery around here. As you'll see as soon as I come over this hill. guys, I guess I'm gonna head out. I exploded a bunch of quartz, made sure I picked up all my flakes, and I'll try to complete something with this rock as soon as I get home. Now, there's fire laws here, so you can't just have an open fire on the ground. If you want to cook, you have to do it on these grills with these picnic tables. So uh, I think I'm just gonna use some of this as a tinder bundle, some of this really dry leaves, and uh, collect some sticks and twigs and get the fire going and see what we could do. Very dry. So we're going for dry twigs, small ones for now. I'm going to put that on the side here. And we'll see if we can get this going. So I just collected these bigger sticks to put on after I get this little twigs going. I got some flint, fire steel, char cloth.
So, since this busted on me, we are going to sacrifice this for the fire, and I will be making a new video on how to make these soon. Anyway. Chicken, barbecue sauce. Yes. And this is called a foreshaft. It pops out inside the animal that you're hunting. It fits in like that. This hooks into the back end like that. Then you hold it like this, you aim, and you throw. I'll demonstrate that. Uh, this one I actually made a few years ago out, out in the woods. I was out for like a, maybe a month plus, and I just decided to make it. And there's a video, if you go way back actually, of me making, making this throwing stick at Laddle. And I think I'm just going to demonstrate what a little point like this made of quartz that I just found on a trail worked it into shape. I'm going to show how effective that is just on something simple. I'm just going to fill it with water to give it some weight so when it hits it doesn't bounce off. We want it to go through. So we'll give it a try. This is kind of a heavy duty container. We'll see how it does. I haven't done this in a while and my feathers are falling off. It's old sinew. Let's see what happened. The point went into the bottle. See now, when you're hunting with these, Let's say that animal's struggling. This thing pops off. This falls so you could grab it again, pick it up. This thing's running away, bleeding everywhere with a spear point in it. That did some pretty good damage. That's a big wound. So this foreshaft here, like I was saying before, would have come off in the animal. And if you want to see this, this stuff being actually used in hunting, check out uh, Ryan Gill at Hunt Primitive. He's actually killed a bison with one of these. You can just check out his channel. I'll put it in the, uh, the link below. But it's Ryan Gill at Hunt Primitive. And he's, uh, he's really an expert at these things. I'm going to do one more test with this. It's wet and weakened. Like I said, it might come loose. But we're going to throw it into the tree here just to see if it does any damage to the point at all. I see the point has a little bit of, a little tiny bit of crumbly stuff here, so I don't know, but we'll test it. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Minor, minor, miter tip damage. It just took the sharp tip off. So I would just have to resharpen that, but it hit right there. Put a big gouge in there. Look at that sizzling there. All that grease from the chicken came out and is kind of frying the chicken on its own a little bit. Try this piece. Wow. 
barbecue sauce tastes are really, really great with the fire right on it. You're really gonna like this. Save the turtles, eat the crabs. I don't have any crabs today, but this is awesome chicken. And I got my fork and knife. Some barbecue sauce on the side here. Mm. This is probably the best barbecue sauce that I've tasted. So you could ask Leah and she'll chime in. But I use this at fancy restaurants in front of the waitresses. <laughs> I just start cutting the food with it. <laughs> I know. Funny looks. She likes it. She thinks it's funny. I see nothing wrong with this. I even used it on sushi. And the way I um, clean these is I just rub them off with rubbing alcohol and scrub them with a sponge. It doesn't dull any, it's still really sharp. This is gonna be extra sticky though because it's barbecue sauce and chicken. Was if you can't get out into the woods to do the bushcraft thing or the survival thing, let me back the camera up a little. Yeah, if you can't get out to do the bushcraft survival thing and you're really craving to go outside, go outside anyway. Go out to the park like I did today. I wasn't really feeling too up to going out into the deep woods, so I came somewhere pretty. I'm really enjoying myself and using my stone tools. It smells like barbecue now. I'm having a delicious chicken. I'm with a pretty girl. It's uh, better than sitting around on the computer at home, I can tell you that. I think I'm going to try a few casts in there before I head out. I don't think I could keep anything right now, but I'm still going to try it. Let's see if we get a catch a nine inch trout. Nine inch trout. <laughs> look. Well, good luck around here. It's easy for like Woodbeard. He okay. goes out into the middle of a lake and catches something like, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, lake trout. Lake trout. This is a. Uh, is this brook trout? I think it, I think it would be brook trout. Yeah. yeah. These guys up in Canada are spoiled. I'm telling you, they're spoiled. <laughs> I'm straight up saying it. Well, from what he tells me, the uh, you can't get anywhere near deer. But here, you can get really close to deer. So, uh, maybe we're a little spoiled too, but... Different ways. Yeah. 
Mm. It might be rainbow trout. I don't know. Or uh, brown. I don't know. I don't know what's in here. If you want to practice your bushcraft survival stuff, parks are really accessible for people to go to. And yeah, there's people around and you might get some looks and stuff, but if you start doing stuff like this in public, maybe you'll inspire other people to do it too. Um, yeah, you give them, kind of give them permission to do things that wouldn't normally be considered normal. For instance, like using a stone knife in a restaurant. <laughs> but if you do it enough, maybe people will be like, oh, that must be... That must be the way to go, stone tools in a restaurant. You might see people eating sushi with stone tools soon. Who knows? I don't know. I'm going to finish this up and see if I could uh, get any bites out of this river. I doubt it. It's still just, the ice just melted. So, we'll see. could do the bushcraft stuff at parks but don't talk people will listen they, if they see you talking like this they'll think you're talking to yourself <laughs> and they might call the cops and say you're crazy especially if you're holding a stone knife in your hand talking to yourself on yeah <sighs> we never bring napkins hmm I would make a book good bushcraft napping. Every video where I'm where I'm eating like this, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> well, there's a there's a creek right there. I could wash my hands in the creek. Yeah. I need to make bushcraft napkins. Bushcraft napkins. Mullen leaf. Yeah, I know. That's Mullen the leaf. Of mine. I don't know. I got the one more. The hairs might stick to you. Got one more piece here. something about me is I'm very pro do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anyone breaking laws like this is perfectly fine to use if you want to use in public you're not gonna get in trouble for this people just look at you weird but that's fine let them look weird because <laughs> it's funny as shit I love making people look at me like oh my god what is this guy doing Cutting chicken with a stone knife. Don't see that every day. I do. <laughs> she sees it every day. Anyway, I'm done with my meal. I'll block out the sun here so you can see. <laughs> Gotta use them. Can't use them on wild game, use them on chicken <laughs> or sushi. So I um, I went and bought all of this, like maybe 500 bottles, along with like all of the toilet paper. I don't know why I need, what? I don't know why I would need that much toilet paper, but, 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 okay. So. <laughs> so stupid. So. Um, to sterilize these knives. This is actually a mix of uh, 50 and 90 percent. So I'm just gonna pour a little on. Rub it off. Make sure you get it out of the little grooves and cracks and stuff. And then I got a sponge. I'm just gonna use the light side of the sponge to get all the chicken gunk and barbecue sauce off. And you really want to try this, these little hinges in these rocks that you want to get that stuff out of. Otherwise, it'll sit there and rot. But you just keep using the sponge, taking it off. You're good to go. Still sharp, didn't dull it at all. Ow, but sharp. Flint, ow.
And then when you get home, uh, after doing this, like this is for if you're out for a long period of time, like I am, you know, just rubbing alcohol, water if you have it. Um, when you get home, really, really hot water, scrub the hell out of it. And maybe just even some dish soap or something along that lines if, you know, you're into those modern things like that. Anyway, this is good to go. Going back in my pocket. Waiting the next chicken or pig or whatever. Squirrel. I don't know. Whatever I eat next. This one here, just for the hell of it, I'm going to show. There is a weak spot going through it. You see that line there? If you see that in any of your tools, that's a weak spot. So that's why I didn't notch in here and put it on a handle. But this side is good. This side has very little. So as is like this, just to slide my pocket with that imperfection in there is fine. It, it won't break using it like this. It might break if you, uh, you know, jam it into bone or something like that and that might break, but you're not gonna be doing that with something that you hold in your hand. You're gonna want a handle on it. Make sure you put a handle on it if you're doing any heavy duty work. Keep it away from your hand so you don't break it and cut yourself. It still smells like chicken. And polish it too. <laughs> Alright, enough with that. Getting too many bites, nothing. Everything needs to wake back up again. It's not there yet. So thanks for hanging out. We went on a little hike, we played with the Atlato, we did a little bit of fishing, we did some cooking. Just go outside. Go outside. Don't stay home and don't stay at home on the computer. Go and have fun. Bring your family, bring your friends. Just go do it. Go out. Outside. Keep saying it. So I'm going to try, for real, to do it once a week. If it's not once a week, it's going to be every other week. But stuff like this, stuff like the how-tos, fun stuff, exploring, adventure, hiking, fishing. When hunting gets around, hunting. Stone tools, always stone tools. And uh, huskies. Huskies. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. Hit like. Comment. Well, comment. And subscribe. Don't forget. Hit the little bell icon, too, so you know that I'm uploading stuff. You won't see it if you don't. Do that stuff. You know how to do that stuff. So, thanks for hanging out. Gonna head out now, go home full of chicken, and check in next week. Just make sure you hit that bell icon so you see the one I upload. So you see when I upload. All right, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll see you later. Oh, and just in case you, if you guys didn't know, I sell my stone tools on my Etsy shop at Vision Quest Outdoors. And you can check that. I have a link in the description of uh, every episode I do here. 
and I sell my knives, I sell necklaces, and I do some custom orders if it's uh, doable. So uh, check that out, let me know what you think. Also, for every tool, knife, whatever that you buy, necklace, that goes towards me recording more. So you help support the channel here, you help, you help me out with those purchases. So, thank you. And you get something really cool in return that I want you to use.